tonight, Seattle and Utah Valley, two teams that have created for themselves quite a Western rivalry. Going head to head, the Red Hawks and the Wolverines. Coming up next right here on UVU TV. CCU Center in Orem, Utah, home of the Wolverines of Utah Valley, where tonight the Wolverines entertain the Red Hawks of Seattle University. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jimmy Mack, along with Matt Peterson. This is the first of two games between these two. They'll play each other again next weekend. Both these teams looking to get a victory tonight. Very important for them to get off. Wolverines, by the way, coming off kind of a disappointing loss to Wyoming, Matt. Yeah, tough loss a couple nights ago to Wyoming. They played a very good game. We're going to see some of the highlights here. A lot of good play all the way around. Isaiah Williams came out, came out and was the leading scorer for the Wolverines. I thought Alfonso Hubbard came in off of the bench. I think he did a very nice job. So it was a tough loss. Uh, it'll be something that we'll have to see how the Wolverines recover from that because that was a tough loss. The Wolverines, I'm sure, are walking away from that game thinking that they should have come away the victor. They lost by six. It's one of those things, though, it could either make or break the rest of your season. You could come out of there saying, look, we can play with just about anybody, or you could come out of there saying, doggone it, we lost a game that we really should have won. We're up with just a few seconds left. We couldn't pull it out, and they just hang their heads and season over. Yeah, I think they need to look at some of these highlights that we're looking at because there was some very good basketball that was played by the Wolverines. It was an all-around team effort. Keith Thompson, he came in, he played very well. So I, I think you have a point there, Jim. And I don't think that the Wolverines are going to, to, to lie down as we see the controversial last second play here where Holden goes up for the three point shot. So no I, foul call. On that. No foul call. I, I don't think that the Wolverines are going to back down from the challenge tonight. All right. So let's talk about this game. Seattle and Utah Valley key players. Now you're looking for for both these teams. Yeah, we look at Aaron Broussard here and he came coming off a career high 31 points last game and he's averaging 17.4 points per game on the season. So he's going to come into this game with a lot of confidence. He's going to be prepared to play. For the Wolverines, we've got Isaiah Williams. Leads Utah Valley in scoring, averaging 14 and a half points per game. So our eyes are going to be on these two players for tonight's game because they're going to carry the load offensively for their teams. Again, Isaiah, 23 points against Wyoming Tuesday night. All right, so keys to victory for both these teams, Matt. Yeah, keys to victory for the Wolverines. They've got to have a strong rebounding presence, and they've got to have production off of the bench. They got that last game from Alfonso Hubbard, as we mentioned a little bit earlier. For Seattle, they've got to have and maintain their defensive pressure, and they've got to try and control the tempo of the game because when the Wolverines are here at home, they tend to do a very good job of controlling the game themselves. Yes, they do. We're going to take a break. Back with more Costa Vida pregame show and your opening tip coming your way right here on UBU TV. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills.
I'm Patty Garcia, a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. Seattle and Utah Valley getting set to do battle here at the UCCU Center in Orem, Utah. Seattle comes in here three and nine overall. Utah Valley seven and ten. Neither team burning it up as of late. Utah Valley having lost five out of their last six games. Meanwhile, Seattle has lost six or is make it seven of their last eight, including six in a row. So as we were talking before, we went to break there, Matt. Both these teams really need a victory to get off on a good, strong footing for the rest of the season. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a springboard type of game for both of these teams. And I think that probably both coaches know that. And at this point, having played so much basketball, the players know that as well. So each team will have to get off to a good start in this game. All right, we're going to join the PA announcer here, Eric Allen, at the UCCU Center for tonight's starting lineup introduction. Wolverines. And now, fans, get your Miniman Press rosters ready as we announce tonight's starting lineups. Miniman Press is the first and last step in printing. First, the starting lineup for the visiting Seattle U Red Hawks. At forward, number two, Aaron Broussard. The other forward, number 12, Clarence Trent. At center, number 25, Eric Wallace. At guard, number 10, Sterling Carter. And the other guard, number five, Cervante Burrell. Head coach of Seattle is Cameron Dollar with assistance Donald Dollar, Yazir Rosemont, Darren Talley. Somewhat of a little surprise in that starting lineup because uh, Obasi or Prince Obasi has started all 12 games prior to tonight. He's their guard. He leads the team in assists. He is not starting tonight for Seattle. Instead, it's Cervante Burrell, a 5'10 senior, at the guard spot. Pretty interesting lineup change. I don't know if uh, perhaps Obasi is nursing an injury or just some sort of strategy. Seattle comes in here averaging 70 points a game. They're three and nine overall. They're two and four on the road. They've actually won more games on the road than they have at home. They're two and four on the road, just one and five in Seattle. Cameron Dollar, his third season is 31 and 43 overall with the Red Hawks. These two teams have played four times previous to tonight, twice in each of the last two seasons. Seattle won them both in the first year, then last season, they split, both teams winning at home. Back to Eric Allen for Utah Valley starting lineups. And now, the starting lineups for you, UVU Wolverines. And forward, a six foot six senior from Bellflower, California, number 33, Keith Thompson. The other forward, a six foot five senior from Bronx, New York, number 15, Getty Robinson. At center, a six nine sophomore from Bountiful, Utah, number 34, Ben. At guard, a six foot sophomore from North Salt Lake City, number 12, Walton Anziger. And the other guard, from six foot one senior from Chicago, Illinois, number two, Isaiah Williams. Head coach of the Wolverines is Dick Hunsaker. With assistance, Mike Kelly, Steve Payne, Paul Moss, and Rob Goudreau. There's no way I can say Isaiah Williams the way that Eric Allen says Isaiah Williams. Isaiah averaging 14 and a half points a game. Uh, about four points, five points less than he averaged last year during his All-American junior season here at Utah Valley. Utah Valley comes in here averaging 64 and a half points a game. They're giving up about 65 points a game, though. And as we mentioned earlier, Matt, before the break, I'm really interested to see how Utah Valley responds after that six-point loss to Wyoming on Tuesday night on this floor. 
Yeah, they've got to put it behind them. They they can't let it uh, you know dwell in their minds because if there's one thing about a basketball season, you play a lot of games and you have a lot of opportunities to get back on track. And the Wolverines are going to have a lot of games left in the season. So the response that they have very early on could tell us a lot. Utah Valley six and two at home here at the UCCU Center. Wolverines control the opening tip. We are underway. Utah Valley in Seattle. Thanks for being along with the ride. This one should be fun. Unsaker. Now to KT. Deep right corner. Cross court Isaiah. His first touch. Here's a three. There he goes. Yeah, a very nice skip pass there from Keith Thompson. You know, that was a very long pass. He was stuck in the corner trying to dump it into Ben Ayer, but the help defender came down and a very, a very nice skip, uh, skip pass there from Keith. So Turnaround jumper, no good from Broussard, but up and hanging on the rim. So it'll be Utah Valley basketball as Eric Wallace up just a little bit too high. I don't think he meant to grab a hold of the rim. He was definitely trying to crash the glass there. Number two, Aaron Broussard, very active on the offensive rebound, was able to tear the ball away from Ben Air. Isaiah for three, coming back quickly the other way. Nothing but red jerseys on the mess. Wallace again. Long two. Well, you like to see Isaiah come out quickly. He's touched the ball twice and put it yeah. up twice. Yeah, and look at this pressure that Seattle's putting on. It almost looks like a, a one 2 one one press. And when you have, so, you know, when you're facing pressure, you've got to attack. And so that last shot from Isaiah in three was a good shot because the, the quickest way to get someone out of a trap like that is if you can attack. Isaiah, third shot, missed that one. Alfonso Hubbard, by the way, in the lineup right now for UVU, replacing Keith Thompson. Jumper outside from Trent. Nope. Red Hawks maintain possession, however. Well, goes over the left side to Wallace. Kicks it out. Trent. Got it. Seattle's first lead, four to three, with a minute and a half gone here. Nice jump shot there. Was able to get Ben Air up in the air as Ben was trying to close out on the three-point shot. This is what you want from the Wolves. Keep attacking. You're going to get these types of offensive three-point shots. But when you're able to beat the press like they have, you're going to get great shots, and they have. And just keep attacking. Those shots will be there. Holton Hunsaker nails the three. You back out in front. Six to four. Ben Air blocks the shot. Broussard, Isaiah, pull up jumper, missed it, rebound comes down to Seattle, Burrell pulled that one down. Burrell takes it all the way, puts it up, missed it. Hubbard with the rebound for UVU. A pretty up-tempo pace early on here for both teams. I would imagine this is how they both want to play. Going to see the Wolverines pull it out and slow it down here a little bit, get a good, uh, get their get their offensive set and run a, run a good play. And if memory serves, one of the keys to victory for Seattle for you was to control the tempo, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I think what they're trying to do is do that by, you know, with the with the press and with the trapping that they're trying to do. Gettys Robinson having a little trouble with it. Gets it to Hubbard. Out to Ben Air. He'll take the jumper. A little too hard. Rebound comes down to Wallace. Jumper from Eric Wallace is buried from the right side. We're tied at six. Yeah, he likes that elbow jump shot. Those are where his two shots and two baskets have come from. Isaiah has it slapped away from behind. Turnover. Red Hawks coming back the other way. Three on three. Burrell cannot get that one down, so Wolverines have possession again. Yeah, great rotation defense there from Ben Aaron. He came over. Saw Burrell driving in the paint and came over and blocked the shot. Great help defense from Ben. Huntsaker, a little too hard. Alfonso Hubbard rebound. Gettys Robinson forces it up inside in traffic. Red Hawks come away with it. About four minutes gone here in the first half. 6-6. Six, six. 
Yeah, Wolverine switching here, Jim, to a 2-3 zone, what they played for the entire game against Wyoming. I thought they did a nice job during that game. Let's see how Seattle attacks the zone and another block there. I believe that was by Ben Aird once again. Ben Aird leads his team in block shots. 26 on the season. Wolverines have gone cold from outside. Hubbard inside though. Gives them a two point lead. Yeah, great, great job of crashing the offensive glass there from Alfonso Hubbard. Wolverines have got some opportunities off of the offensive glass early on, and once again, they settle back into this 2-3 zone. Wolverines hit their first shot since then, one of nine shooting. Seattle, by the way, three of ten overall. Broussard can't get it to go. Picked up by the Wolverines. They've got numbers. Gettys Robinson. Gettys Robinson, he's 6'5". He plays like he's about 6'9". He averages a double-double. 10 points a game and 10 and a half rebounds a game. Well, that was a nice move. He, he didn't get that in the best position, but he created his own shot, bulled himself into the defender, no offensive foul. Great move and able to come away with an easy jump shot. That brings us to our first media timeout. 14.37 left first half, Wolverines up by four. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills. Patty Garcia, a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. Ten to six here at the UCCU Center. We're in Orem, Utah, home of the Utah Valley Wolverines. Seattle and Utah Valley first of two games. These two teams will actually play each other next Friday night in Seattle. See, Seattle's trying to get the Wolverines into pressure, and Holton's done a good job of making those diagonal passes, long, deep passes on a number of occasions to get the outlet and to get the Wolverines out and running. Ben a little jump hook over Gavin Gilmore. Wolverines have doubled up the Red Hawks at 12 to 6. Red Hawks working it around. Got a lot of fresh faces in the game. Jumper outside from Rasmussen. And another defensive rebound this time by Alonzo, uh, Alfonso Hubbard. And yeah, the zone defense is kind of, I think, put Seattle in a little bit of a frustration because they haven't had, uh, they haven't run their offense as well since the Wolverines have gone into the zone as we get a nice duck in here from Alfonso on the post up. And we, we talked about last game against Wyoming how Ben Aird can handle the ball above or you know, past the, the free throw line as we'll see him get the ball up top and make a nice entry pass into Alfonso as he was posting up and just did a, had a nice duck in move there. You know, he came in a, against Wyoming had a couple of those possessions where he was able to post up. I think that's what he likes to do. You know, he likes to get inside. He likes to post up and, and create his own opportunities there. Foul on Allen Tate, his first. In fact, that's the first foul called in the game. You kind of like to see that, I'm guessing, as a player. Six and a half minutes of action and just one foul call. And I know I'm probably jinxing the whole game now by saying that. but Yeah, they've definitely let them play. I mean, I think it's uh, you know attributed to when you do not foul, that you can say that hey you're in good defensive position most of the time because you're not forced to foul or you're not you're not putting yourself in a difficult spot. A lot of times when you see a lot of fouls committed, it's because you're out of position defensively. 
So I think both teams have, have uh, been pretty good so far. Red Hawk basketball. Oh, now they changed their minds. They're going to give it to UVU. After that Hubbard miss of a second free throw. Always fun to see officials huddle up and you find out who has clout in the officiating world when they come out of those things. Ben Aird inside. That time defender Gavin Gilmore had fallen to the floor. It's 15 to 6, a 9 0 run right now for the Wolverines. This game was tied at 6. Prince Obasi is into the game. One we told you usually starts. Outside jumper from Chad Rasmussen. Good. It's a three, so that stops that 9 0 run. 15 9, Wolverines. Yeah, I think uh, as we see the, uh, what you always have to be aware of is that uh, defender coming from behind when you're in the front court and, and you know there's some defenders behind you. Another three. This one a little short. Long lead pass to KT. Layup good. And one. Yeah, that was created by, by a rush shot there from Aaron Broussard. Uh, I think he's getting some coaching here. He took an early shot and the Wolverines were out running and Keith Thompson, nobody better on the Wolverines in transition of getting out, getting that outlet pass and finishing in transition. Wanted to go back, I think one reason why the Wolverines are playing a zone against Seattle is because on the year, Seattle only shoots 29% essentially from the three point line. So Wolverines are probably saying to themselves, we're gonna try and make them beat us from the three point line. It's gonna get a lane violation in this possession here. But Chad Rasmussen, who hit that last three-point shot, is the best three-point shooter for Seattle. So whenever he's on the court, they've got to make sure that they've got him marked. Eric Wallace a little too quick into the lane on that free throw that had been missed by Keith Thompson. So Keith will get to try it all over again. Senior from Bellflower, California, nails the second one. Nice assist, by the way, on that play from Holton Hunsaker. He's already got three assists. Leads the team on the season. 12 and a half minutes to play first half inside. Blocked that time by KT, but put back up and in by Eric Wallace. Yeah, good finish there from Eric Wallace. There's a classic high low there in the zone. The ball was dumped in around the free throw line and just a simple dump into Eric Wallace. And good block there from Keith, but Eric was able to get the ball back and finish. Isaiah. My goodness gracious. Six points. Nice pass inside to Clarence Trent. Twenty-one thirteen. Yeah, nice play there from Prince Obasi able to get inside. T. Thompson misses. Twenty-one thirteen the score. Nice to play Taylor Brown. Able, yeah, nice to yeah. able to get out in the passing lane. Brings us to another timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. Scoreboard has to be updated just a little bit. Seattle trails 21 13, 11 26 left. First half. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands on practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Forty-seven percent shooting for Utah Valley, thirty-three for Seattle. 
Utah Valley's hit three of seven from beyond the arc. Seattle's hit one of four. Isaiah Williams, leading scorer for Utah Valley at six. Eric Wallace has six for Seattle. Seattle basketball as we resume action here at the UCCU Center. And now we have our second foul called in this game. And I think Seattle's trying to get the ball into the middle of that zone. And that's going to be, it looks like, their first preference. If they can get the ball into the middle there like they did on that possession, Aaron Broussard has the freedom to try and create his own shot or make a play by dishing it off, as we saw on a high-low earlier. Possibility of a kick out as well. Gettys Robinson picks up his first personal. It's actually the third foul in the game, correction. Jumper coming from Trent, just a bit short. Wolverines there to pull it in. And they switch back to a man-to-man -man defense there. So we're seeing a lot of defensive strategies here put in by Coach Hunsaker. He's playing zone some possessions. I think maybe went to man just on the inbound there. Gettys Robinson inside. Wolverines by 10, matches their biggest lead of this first half. Yeah, Gettys with a good job of being patient, didn't force anything, able to back the defender that down. And we get a turnover there once again. Ball in the high post. That time, Clarence Trent just turned and threw the ball to nobody. But uh, they're, they're clearly looking to, to get it at that high post. Just Seattle's second turnover here. Colton Hensager returns. Taylor Brown takes a seat for the Wolverines. Wolverines doing a good job thus far breaking the press of Seattle. Wolverines have seen a press most of the season, most notably against the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. Keith Thompson, a little jump hook. Wow. KT, lighten it up. Yeah, that's been their best offense is, is posting up as we see Ben come around to get around the post for a nice steal. But Wolverines look like they're very comfortable posting up just about any player possible as Getty's trying to get the ball inside here. Keith Thompson's feeling it. Ben Ayer takes the jumper outside. There's your 6'10 sophomore bearing a jumper that long. And that was a good play by Keith. He, he tried to get to the rim. He was cut off, and he was able to kick out to Ben Ayer for the wide open jump shot. Didn't force it, didn't try and get, you know, just bull his way to the rim, but was able to dish it off to Ben for the jump shot. Coach Cameron Dollar calling the Quick little 30 second timeout for Seattle. Settle his team down. Well, we talked about it in the pregame show that both these teams really needed to get off to a hot start. Right now, it's UVU with the hot start. About halfway done of the first half, 27-13. We see the replay of Ben Ayer. Has plenty of time, able to line it up. He definitely has the range and is able to make those shots from, from that distance. Ben Ayers, three of four from the floor. He's got six points. He and Isaiah, the leading scorers for the Wolverines. Keith Thompson with five. Gettys Robinson, four. Holton with three. Alfonso Hubbard with three. 27-13. Sterling Carter takes a long jumper outside. Front rim, tipped up. Wolverines come away with it, though. That's what you want. You want to be able to force those long three-point jump shots and be able to secure the defensive rebound. Thompson being guarded closely by Allen Tate. The big Ben now. Got Wallace all over him. Inside the KT. Spins around, hanging jumper, good. Keith Thompson has got seven points. He came in here averaging seven points a game. Still got nine minutes to play, first half. See an offensive rebound there by, Chet, excuse me, by Eric Wallace. Burrell with the jumper, missed it. Seattle just six of 21 shooting from the floor. That's good for 28%. Isaiah kicks out, Hunsaker for three. Nope. Wallace has it knocked out of his hands by Ben Aaron. Seattle basketball. Now that's a good shot. You, you like the transition offense. Wide open three-point shot. 
I've been impressed with the defense of the Wolverines. Seattle has definitely struggled to get into their offense and to get a good shot on, on continual possessions. What they've tried to do recently is get their big man coming up, setting screens on the guards. We're going to see Wallace set one here for Burrell to come off of. Uh, that's how they're trying to create some offense, and Wolverines are doing a good job. They're going to get a legal screen there, too. Wow. That one's going to get called against Gavin Gilmore. Illegal screen sort of looked like Isaiah fell on top of him, but. Yeah, the guards are going to be trying on those types of screens to be fighting over top of it, and Isaiah put himself in a good position there to fight over the top. He gets tripped up, and offensive foul is called. And you see Seattle not putting as much pressure on now, I think, because of the Wolverines have, have forced them to get out of that and forced them to get back in more of a half-court defensive set. Ben Air down the lane with a little jump hook again. Seattle on the run. Carter's got it. Takes it to the hole. No, follow is good, though, from Allen Tate. Yeah, nice job of crashing the offensive glass there from Allen Tate. Off of the, the missed shot in transition. That stopped an 8 0 run that the Wolverines were on. <laughs> Isaiah Williams. <laughs> Gotta be kidding me. Yeah, he's very difficult to defend. How do you defend that? It, you he, don't. He was looking like he was trying to pass that ball into Ben as Ben was posting up. But he had too much space and he had too much rhythm as he was just dribbling there. And we often talk so much about his quick release, able to make the basket. 32 15, 723 to play first half. Back in a minute on UVU TV. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Isaiah looking to dump that into Ben Aird on the post up, lulling the defender to sleep and given too much space, as we said, and just able to rise up with his quick release and nail the three point shot. You've always got to be aware because he's he's got range. He's going to shoot it from anywhere on the court. Defenders are going to have to do a better job of getting out and getting a hand up on the shot. Both teams have taken 24 shots in this first half. Seattle's made seven of theirs. Utah Valley's made 13 of theirs. That's why it's 32 to 15 right now. Seattle did lead once in this game. It was four to three. Seattle basketball. Burrell's got it. A little bossy. Whistled away from the ball. This one's going to go against the Wolverines. Going to get called against Rory Fannin, a senior from New Zealand, who checked into that into the game during that last break. Yeah, he and T.J. Diop were battling for position inside and. Rory a little too aggressive there gets called for the foul. He was trying to battle around and, and try and get a, get in front of Diop, but fouled in the process. Interesting matchup between those two. TJ Jop, I'm told, is how he likes it said, is from Australia. Rory from New Zealand. So at least they understand each other when they talk. They do. <laughs> Terry, territorial battle there. Jumper outside, good from TJ Jock. And there's that, there's that elbow jump shot once again. The, the weak side defender for the Wolverines in the zone is the one who's got to be responsible for that. Sometimes the big man will have responsibility, but most times it's going to be that weak side defender that will need to be aware of who's ever at the high post on the rotation. Isaiah guarded by Burrell. Now Hubbard. Inside Gettys, nice feed. Gettys Robinson finds a way to do it. 
19th in the nation in rebounding, by the way. Doing a pretty good job scoring as well. That mess, say, no, not saved. I thought Isaiah had done a pretty acrobatic job of saving that one. He did not. Seattle basketball. Yeah, on that last play, a good job of Getty's realizing that his defender was overplaying him. He had, he was on the weak side and just did a weak side cut back or cut to the basket. And Alfonso prepared and ready to pass that ball and a good finish from Getty's. Ball stolen away. Hubbard pushes it up against Gilmore. Gets it back. Wide open jumper for three. On the floor, Big Ben picks it up. Tried to call a timeout. Did he get it? I think they're going to give it to him. Wow. Big Ben, 6'10", sophomore. Bountiful Utah. Served a mission to the LDS Church in Spokane, Washington. 34-17, Wolverines have doubled up Seattle with 5.47 to play here, first half. So I guess the question that I had asked in the pregame show, how would the Wolverines respond to such a close game against Wyoming on Tuesday night? Uh, right now, the answer is just fine, thank you. Yeah, and they've done a good job offensively, but I think they could be more proud of the job that they've done defensively. They've forced Seattle into some tough shots. Seattle 8 of 26 on the night. So that's been a combination of what they've done defensively and you know they not to take away from their offense, but they played they played very well on both ends. Big Ben misses inside. Seattle on the run now, coming back the other way. Lead pass, kicks outside, long two, Broussard. Got it. Yeah, it's almost a turnover there on the shot from Ben as it was a little bit uh, deflected. I know Coach Hunsaker was hoping for a foul. And off of those types of uh, situations, you've got to get back in transition. Wolverines did not do so, and Hubbard makes him pay. Gettys Robinson inside and one. Excuse me, on that last play, it was Broussard who made them pay on the, on the three-point shot. You see Gettys Robinson going up strong. He creates that contact. Uh, he was able to go into the defender, keep the ball away. Nice job of putting himself in a good position to finish there. Gettys Robinson from the Bronx. You say he likes that contact. I guess he learned to play that way growing up, huh? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's he's willing to battle with anybody inside, and he's he's a tough kid. Yeah, he's very strong and you know, very tough as well. And that that probably what's it, what aids him more than anything is his toughness. 16 point lead for UVU right now. Broussard, by the way, finally on the scoreboard, three points after that last three-pointer. He's one of six from the floor. He's their leading scorer. If he gets hot, look out. The floater by Obasi. Wolverines come away with it. Isaiah for three. He's three of five from beyond the arc now. 437 left, and Coach Cameron Dollar of Seattle jumps up, calls a timeout. He saw something he wasn't real thrilled about. So he wants to talk to his Red Hawks. 16-point lead for the Wolverines right now. Kind of a scheduling quirk that these two, or at least for Utah Valley, they'll play Seattle tonight. They don't play again until they play Seattle on Friday. Back to back for the Wolverines. Meanwhile, for Seattle, They've got to play Washington on Tuesday night at their place. Isaiah Williams right now. There you see his evening thus far. Came in here averaging a little over 14 points a game. Last year during his All-American season, he averaged 18 points a game. He's drawn a lot of defense, yeah. though, from just about everybody the Wolverines have played. Yeah, it's so hard when you have such a good season to come back and, and put together another one. Um, you know, you're he's Mark played man. Great. Yeah, you're Mark Man. He's played great, though. I mean, he's he's played great and not to, you know, four points less on the, on the year, but he's played great. Wow. Flushed by Eric Wallace. Wolverines have, have found themselves in trouble in that zone defense when Seattle's able to get the ball inside. A, a couple of times that Seattle's been able to dump it off to the weak side. That time there was a late rotation by the bottom defender on the weak side. 
to get inside uh, on the dunk there from Eric Wallace, but a good finish from him. Nice interior passing from Seattle. Keith Thompson hanging jumper. No. Gettys Robinson had it momentarily. Now Seattle on the run. Nice ball movement over to Rasmussen. Now they're working over to the right side. Right corner. Trent tried to get it inside to Wallace again. Wallace has a hot hand. He's got eight points. Leading scorer right now for Seattle. Brings us to another TV timeout. 3.38 to play first half. Wolverines lead at 36 22. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Finished from Eric Wallace. Once again, as you see, Ben Aird had to go over and help the post player on the strong side, able to dump it off to Eric Wallace on the weak side for the finish. Eric Wallace, six foot seven senior from Winston Salem, North Carolina, originally played at Ohio State for a year, then transferred to DePaul, played a couple of seasons, got hurt, finishing up his senior year now at Seattle. Wolverines by 14 right now. They've led by as many as 17 here in this first half. Gettys Robinson, eight points, two rebounds. Isaiah, wow, there's some awareness. That one's blocked, though. Clarence Trent got it. Wolverines control it. And a travel going to be called against Gettys Robinson. Yeah, good defensive possession there from Seattle. They were very active on getting out to the shooters. Isaiah tried to take a shot on the jump, uh, excuse me, on the elbow, kicked it out to Holden. Holden attempted a three point shot that was blocked. That was probably Seattle's best defensive possession of the night so far. Coming up on three minutes left here till the break. Stolen away, Hunsaker alone on the breakaway, missed it. It doesn't get any easier than that. Poor Holton. Seattle, fresh life. Rasmussen for three, makes him pay the other way. Yeah, funny how things work out like that. When you get an easy opportunity that's missed offensively, it turns into a, a three-point shot. That was a five-point swing there. Now Holton goes up for the goes up for the easy layup. Doesn't finish, and they turn it into points. Whoa! There you go, KT. Keith Thompson finishing off the alley oop. Outside, three pointer won't go. Stripped away. Hunsaker saves it from going out of bounds. Picked up and put in by Eric Wallace. Yeah, nice job, Holden, getting on the floor there, saving the ball. So hard, you're, you're so, you know, your instinct says just throw it wherever. Able to get it right back in the middle of the floor there. And a finish there from Eric Wallace. 38 27. Seattle down by 11. Yeah, and that last possession on the dunk from, from Keith Thompson. Good job. Nice open pass there from Holton. Thought he was going to do it again. Got hung out to drive for a second. Well, Keith Thompson having his best first half of the season. He's got 11 points. 40, 27. Thank you. Ben Eric skies for the miss. And the rebound and a foul. You know, we've only had six fouls called thus far. This will be foul number seven of the half between the two teams. 
going to get called against Seattle's Clarence Trent. His first. Team's fifth. Five out of seven called against Seattle. But really, seven fouls and a half, that's, that's pretty clean basketball. Yeah, and you, I think you've seen it because zone has been played, and I think a lot of times you don't foul as much in the zone. Taylor Brown almost had the finish. Clean block by Eric Wallace. Red Hawks coming back the other way. And just like that, two fouls on back-to-back -back possessions. Yeah, the Wolverines are doing a good job of breaking the pressure here. Ben Ayers called for the foul. Wolverines, as I was saying there, they're, they're doing a good job of breaking that pressure. You know, Taylor had, a, had an open lane there to the basket, but just a terrific defensive play there from Eric Wallace. And once again, off of a turnover, off of a missed opportunity, the ball is quickly going back the other way, and Cervante Burrell is able to penetrate in the defense. And he's one of those players who is very crafty inside. He's able, he's a smaller player. He's able to get among the trees inside and create offensively. Wolverines get called and get caught there and forced to foul. Burrell had only missed one free throw all season before that one. He's now missed two. He made the back end, though. Wolverines lead is 12. We're under a minute to go till the break now. Taylor Brown feeds inside, stolen away. Seattle jumped in front of that pass intended for Hubbard. 10-second differential, shot clock and game clock. Burrell with it. Working over the corner, jumper from Rasmussen. That one will belong to the Wolverines. I think they're going to say it's staying here with. Oh, no. Yeah, going to stay with Seattle. Did that official not point this direction? I think he was pointing that it went off of a Wolverine player. He pointed uh, our direction and then and then uh, said it off you, red, red ball. <laughs> he said what? I've been on the end of that that one. Off of you, okay. going oh, this th way. Thank you. <laughs> you basketball players. Eric Wallace kicks outside. Ten seconds shot clock. 18 on the game clock. First half. And a little hand check foul going to get called against Alfonso Hubbard. And that was what, about a minute ago? I said, hey, it's a pretty cleanly played yeah. game. Not many fouls called. And all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, turn right around. The game's. I'll never learn. Game's changed uh, that way. Seattle's going to get the last possession here. Look for them to work the ball down, get the last shot, not, not allow the Wolverines to have any other opportunity. 12 point lead right now for Utah Valley. Now the shot clock is off. Seattle looks like they'll play for the last shot here in the first half. And a whistle inside. Somebody's pushing. My goodness. There's been more fouls called in the last 45 seconds than there has been the whole rest of the first half put together. Yeah, and they're gonna, I think they called that foul on Alfonso Hubbard. His second. You know, this is an important possession if you're Seattle because you have the opportunity to cut the lead to 10 points or, or 9 points. And I think you couldn't ask for anything more if your coach Cameron Dollar is to get that lead down even further. And for the Wolverines, be solid here on defense. Do not foul. Do not give Seattle an opportunity to get anything at the free throw line or an easy basket. Rasmussen will trigger in for Seattle. Gets it into Broussard. Shot blocked by Keith Thompson. Way out front for three. Off the mark. Keith Thompson. What a first half. 11 points. Just Tremendous first half for KT. Isaiah Williams with nine. Meanwhile, Eric Allen with 10 for Seattle. That's how we'll send him to the locker rooms. A 12 point lead for Utah Valley, 40 to 28. Here's the replay on that very impressive alley oop. Holton Hunsaker to Keith Thompson. I'm Sylvia Bentley, an anthropology student at UVU studying ancient Peru, and this is my classroom. At 
UVU, I'm graduating with a diploma and a resume. Think back to when you were a child. What did you dream of becoming as an adult? A pilot? A teacher? A nurse? Maybe a mathematician, a mechanic, or a scientist. Now imagine a place where everyone is focused on your success. Imagine an education that is personal, engaging, fun, and professional. With an education from UVU, all of this becomes true. Utah Valley University. It's your dream. It's your university. Very, very impressive first half here at the UCCU Center for the Utah Valley Wolverines. They lead it 40 to 28. Jim McCall along with Matt Peterson. Partner, what do you think about that first half quickly? Yeah, pretty exciting. I think Seattle fought their way back into the game. The Wolverines were able to stretch it out there at one point. They just haven't shot the ball well. Seattle 12 of 36 from the field. The Wolverines almost 50%. So to me, it's just been the Wolverines' ability to, to get defensive stops on Seattle and force them into difficult shots, and they've been able to convert offensively. Pretty fun first half. This uh, this game, by the way, being produced by students from the College of Technology and Computing here at Utah Valley, digital media students, and the DGM department, just one of 11 programs here in the College of Technology and Computing. Let's take a look. UVU's College of Technology and Computing, also known as TNC, we don't spend a lot of time bragging, but I guess we could. We could brag about having one of the top three aviation programs in the entire country, turning out professional pilots and administrative personnel to work for airlines and private industry. Or we could brag about our national award-winning culinary arts program, with graduates who are going straight to glamorous jobs on cruise ships and in major restaurants, or who are opening their own restaurants. Or we could brag about our digital media students who are winning major awards even before they graduate. Or we could brag about our international efforts, sending TNC students all over the world to places like Mali and Russia and Namibia. Or we could brag about our computer science department or our information systems and technology department as they continue to train some of the best and sharpest young minds in the state of Utah using state-of-the-art technology in classrooms and computer labs. Or we could brag about our technology management program where students are always engaged in life-changing projects like using technology to assist those with disabilities. Or I guess we could brag about the fact that many of the CSI investigators and fire and rescue personnel in the state of Utah have gone through extensive training in our public services programs. Or I guess we could brag about our world land speed record car that was completely built and erased out of our highly acclaimed automotive department. Or we could brag about our high-tech electrical automation and robotic technology and mechatronics programs. Or our engineering graphics and design program which is turning out some of the most advanced technicians in the state of Utah. Or we could brag about our construction technology students who help build habitat for humanity homes. And just one first place at the National Association of Home Builders competition in Las Vegas. That's first place in the entire nation. Or we could brag about TNC students leading UVU to a first, second, or third place finish in the nation for 10 straight years at the National Skills USA competition. Or we could brag about the fact that many companies are discovering that when they hire our graduates, they get somebody who doesn't just know facts. They get a TNC graduate who has actually done it before. And that's because our TNC students are engaged, truly engaged, and actually doing things rather than just learning facts. So, even though there is a lot to brag about here at the College of Technology and Computing, we really don't like to brag much.
group of programs at the College of Technology and Computing. And the students here in the DGM department do a great job running cameras, running audio, directing the broadcast, replays, uh, just phenomenal job. DGM students, all of them. Utah Valley leads at halftime, 40, 28. Keith Thompson, career high, 16. He's got 11 in the first half. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. section and cheer for the mighty wolverines mighty athletic wolverine league sports passes are now available your mall pass gets you tickets to every ncaa home game free food at the tailgate parties prizes at the games and lots of new friends get more information on their facebook page or by calling campus connection at 801-863-8797 go uvu Back in Orem, Utah, Utah Valley with a 12-point lead over Seattle here at halftime. I'm joined now courtside by Assistant Athletic Director Jared Sumption. And actually, Jared and I are the same age. This is what good, healthy exercise makes you look like compared to no exercise whatsoever. All right, young man, uh, here's, what, here's what I want to know. Tell us about the Wolverine Club, because I hear a lot about, this, about these guys, and I never get to go up there. Well, the Wolverine Club is the fundraising arm of UVU Athletics. Uh, we, we, do, we host a lot of events, uh, but our primary goal is to bring in scholarship money for our student athletes so we can con continue to compete on the Division I level and uh, within our conference. Now, I, I didn't get to go up there last Tuesday night when Wyoming was here, but you had stuff going on all over this facility. It was like five or 600 people you were feeding at once. What was the deal with that? <laughs> yeah, we had, uh, we had uh, events in both the Presidential South and the Presidential North. Uh, one was a Wolverine Club dinner that had uh, 300 people at it. Uh, Tucano's fed that whole group. And then uh, in the North Suite, we had an alumni group of uh, all men's basketball, former men's basketball players, about 200 people up there, and uh, just had a great atmosphere. Everybody enjoyed the game, but that's part of the Wolverine Club is bringing people back, feeding them a great dinner, and going and watching the Wolverines win a basketball game. Well, tonight they're winning so far. All right, so I I'm sure there's people out there who said, you know, I wouldn't mind joining this Wolverine Club. I mean, do you have to be a student? Do you have to be associated with the university or what? You know, the, the Wolverine Club is open to everybody. It's uh, it's basically anybody can join. And uh, we have we have a lot of people that come from all over. We actually have people that drive down from Logan every game just to attend uh, wow. our Wolverine Club events and be a part of the atmosphere here. Uh, one of the ways that anybody can join is to go on wolverinegreen.com. Uh, you click on the booster the booster site there, and uh, you can you can join with a credit card, or uh, you can simply just uh, come in and come and talk to me. We'll take care of you. And it's like five thousand bucks or something. No, or? no, it's it's a, a, as minimal as a ten dollar donation. Wow. Uh, every once in a while, we do get those five thousand uh, dollar donors, and we really appreciate it because it, it goes directly into our our scholarship fund to help bring in some great athletes here at UVU. Jared Sumption, thanks for taking the time to stop by, young man. And and really, he's not as old as I am. 
<laughs> it's it's nice to be here with a distinguished gentleman oh, like stop, yourself. Stop. <laughs> distinguished is a code word. We all know what that means. Right. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. Utah Valley leads it at halftime, 40 to 28. It was a very impressive first half as the Wolverines shot 48% from the floor. They took 35 shots and made 17 of them. From three-point land, the Wolverines, well, technically it's 33%, but they took 12 shots and made four. Turnovers, just six in the first half for the Wolverines, seven for Seattle. Now you see Seattle shooting, 12 of 36, that's good for 33%. And then from three-point land, they took 11 and made three. Matt, uh, you've seen the score sheet. You've had time to look at it. Uh, analysis, sir. I think the Wolverines have done a good job of controlling the tempo. That was one of the things that we had talked about initially. We're going to see some of the replays here of the first half. Wolverines were able to, to create a lot of offense for themselves off of offensive rebounds. Um, I think that they've just done a good job of being patient, not forcing any, anything that wasn't there. Now, they've done a good job defensively on Seattle. That's probably been the most impressive thing, uh, holding them to 33% shooting. The second half, let's see if they can continue that up, see if they can keep Seattle to that low of a percentage. I'm sure Coach Dollar's uh, preaching to his team right now that they've got to come out and you know, those shots are going to fall. Just keep playing the way that they have. I think the Wolverines have, have uh, had a total team effort here in the first half. Isaiah Williams, nine. Ben Aird, six. Geddes Robinson, eight. Keith Thompson, 11. Those are the leading scores for Utah Valley. For Seattle, Eric Wallace with 10. We're going to take a break. Back with your second half of action right here on UVU TV. I'm Sylvia Bentley, an anthropology student at UVU studying ancient Peru, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm graduating with a diploma and a resume. Think back to when you were a child. What did you dream of becoming as an adult? A pilot? A teacher? A nurse? Maybe a mathematician? A mechanic? Or a scientist? Now imagine a place where everyone is focused on your success. Imagine an education that is personal, engaging, fun, and professional. With an education from UVU, all of this becomes true. Utah Valley University. It's your dream. It's your university. Back at the UCCU Center, I'm Jim McCullough, along with Matt Peterson. We're about ready to start our second half. Wolverines with a 12-point lead. Wolverines in the first half, 20 rebounds. Seattle, 22 rebounds. There's all sorts of really interesting stats, but you know, none of them mean anything. Only the score really means anything. Yeah, it's a 40-28 lead. Yeah, I think the Wolverines are going to look uh, to come out the start of this second half the same way that they started the first half because. They came out ready to play, showed no signs of the hangover, if you will, from the game against Wyoming. I think Seattle was caught a little bit off guard. So we'll see what trends continue on here in the second half. Seattle will have possession as we start this second half of action. Trailing by 12. Lob inside, tied up, jump ball. Broussard and Holton Hunsaker got tangled up. Possession arrow, Utah Valley. There was that high-low offense again. Eric Wallace gets the ball in the high post. 
passed it inside to Broussard. A little bit of a force pass there as Holton and a number of players came down and were able to tie up. UVU once again able to get it over the stripe against that Seattle press. Ben Ayer hands over to KT. Keith Thompson, 11 points in that first half. Just 12 minutes of action. Ben Ayer working against Wallace. Jumper up top. Keith Thompson, 13 points now. A nice job of getting the ball at the top. A nice swing through to the middle, wide open pull up jump shot. He's played great tonight. He's come out with a lot of intensity. And he's had an effect on both ends, offensive and defensive. He has 13 Tuesday night against Wyoming. That's 26 points in the last two games. We're working it inside for the and one. Nice play. Yeah, I think we're going to see a little bit more activity here as we see Aaron Broussard driving into the middle of the paint. Gets his shot blocked there by Ben, but is able to recover that ball. That's the hardest play to defend is if you can block a shot like Ben did there. It's so hard to, to get that ball back. And it fell right into the lap of uh, Broussard and able to go up. I was going to say, I think we're going to see some more activity out of him because he had a more of a quiet first half. He does lead them in scoring. So look for him to be a little bit more aggressive here. Broussard has gone over 1,100 points in his career. A senior from Federal Way, Washington. 42-31, Wolverines by 11 now. Isaiah Williams misses. Lob inside, Seattle blew it. That time Eric Wallace could not finish. But Seattle comes up with it. Carter for three, got it. Yeah, we're gonna get a timeout from Coach Hunsaker here. His up-tempo pace here turned to Seattle's advantage here in the second half as we get a turnover from the Wolverines in transition. Seattle able to convert on the other end and they've cut the lead to eight points. Yeah, Keith Thompson had scored two, and now all of a sudden, after this three pointer, it's a 6 0 run for Seattle. As they have dropped within eight, 42 34. Utah Valley led by as many as 17 in that first half. Seattle led only one time by one. That's when it was 4 3. Utah Valley then went on a 9 0 run to push it out 15 6. Later, after Seattle had clawed back to within eight, Utah Valley on an eight nothing run. Teams traded baskets down the stretch of that first half. Wolverines led it at halftime, 40 to 28. And on those last couple of possessions there, we just see the importance of not turning the ball over as we're gonna take a look at Eric Wallace, five rebounds, 10 points on the night. He's uh, definitely had a, a good impact for Seattle and the Wolverines will have to account for him going forward. But when you get those turnovers, uh, you know, when you force things that, that aren't there and you're not sure of, you've got to make sure that you get back on, on the defensive end in transition. And uh, Seattle has made the Wolverines pay a couple times here early in the second half. And they haven't had it and uh, turned the ball over and immediately going back the other direction. Wallace has 10 points, the only Red Hawk in double figures right now. Yeah, and this this press we've got here. I mean, it, the Wolverines have been able to attack it in the first half. They've got to continue to do so. As we see Seattle back off here, I don't think that press is going to go away. I think that they're going to continue to to put that pressure on for the rest of the game. Hubbard feeds inside Ben Air. Maybe deflected a little bit by Eric Wallace. Seattle on the run. Broussard lays it up and in. Eight nothing run for Seattle. It's a six point game. Yeah, and that well, theme of the Wyoming game was when uh, the other team goes on a run, as Wyoming did up in Laramie and uh, in the game the other night. When the team goes on a run, how, how do the Wolverines respond? They need some baskets. He tops it up and in. What a, what a game the senior from Bellflower, California is having. Yeah, he's been the man tonight, and he hasn't settled for anything. He's He's been so aggressive going to the rim. And a nice finish there. Long two coming from Eric Wallace. 44-38. Keith Thompson, by the way, 15 points. Just one shy of tying his career high. Oh, 
This might do it. Back rim a little too hard. Red Hawks come away with it. Morrell kicks over left side to Carter. Now up top for three. Air ball out of bounds. Hitting the deck hard. You cannot believe he's fouled. It was not fouled as Chad Rasmussen. Wolverine basketball. Yeah, Wolverines uh, catch a break there, but a great job by Isaiah Williams of recovering there. The Wolverines were in scramble mode as Burrell was pressing up and pushing the ball up the court. A long cross court pass and an, one extra pass to the top of the top of the key there. And uh, Isaiah Williams did a nice job of rotating over and getting a hand up on the three point attempt from Rasmussen. Hubbard. Jumper will not go. Seattle with easy rebound on the miss. Tate feeds inside Broussard, working hard and scoring. Yeah, it's so hard to defend that one. That ball gets in the middle. He's just able to, to create. He's got you know, wiggle. He's got the ability to, to maneuver inside and hard for the Wolverines to defend. Isaiah. Wolverines ice cold in the second half. It's a four point game. Yeah, great defensive play there for Ben Air, able to come over and stop the penetration from Broussard. Thanks, partner. Coach Cameron Dollar jumped right in front of me. Couldn't see a darn thing on that one. A little hold going to be called against Seattle. I think that was going to go against Allen Tate. That'll bring us to a media timeout. 15 and a half to play in this game. Hey, it's heating up here in Orem. It's a four point UVU lead. Valley University. Your life, your beat, your university. I don't know what happened in the locker rooms at halftime, but Seattle has come out here and shot 63% in the second half. They've hit five of eight. Utah Valley, just two of seven. That's 28%. And that's why Seattle has come back from a 12 point halftime deficit to trail by only four. And it only took them four and a half minutes to do it. Yeah, complete reversal of the first half. I, I thought Seattle built up some good momentum towards the end of the first half, and that's clearly carried over here in the second half. And as you said, just the switch seems to have been flipped for both teams. You know, good for Seattle and the opposite direction for the Wolverines. It's going to belong to Seattle. Holton Huntsaker called for the foul. Yeah, they're going to get Holton cause, uh, excuse me, called for a moving screen there. Didn't see exactly the action, but we know how good of a screener Holton is on the interior. He got called for the offensive foul that time. His first, team's second in this half. Obasi has it. Left side now to Carter. Working back over to Obasi. Now the job and a turnover. Wolverines come away with it. Yeah. Alfonso Hubbard was able to anticipate the pass there. Hopped in the passing lane. Easy steal. Thompson on the drive. Kicks it out. Wide open. Hunsaker for three. Front rim. No. Allen Tate with the rebound for Seattle. Under 15 minutes to play. Three. Won't go. Tate with it. Cannot get it down from outside. Isaiah Williams feeds KT. Two on one break. Hunsaker, alley oop. Keith Thompson with a nice finish on a pass that wasn't perfect. Keith Thompson has all six of the Wolverines' second half points on a career 
high 17 point night. And that's how you run the fast break. Give it up and expect to get it back. A nice job of teamwork there from the Wolverines. Isaiah Williams. 11th turnover for Seattle. Isaiah, baseline jumper is good. He's so good at that. He's so good at stopping on a dime. You know, he's able to get defenders in, in certain positions. We're going to get a timeout here from Seattle, but he's so good at, at driving, stopping on a dime, elevating oh, over the defender, and that was just a beautiful move. 48-40, Utah Valley by eight. See, what this is what I'm talking about. You think he's going so hard to the basket, he plants that right foot and is able to just step up, step back, and knock in the jump shot. That's so hard to defend because Isaiah has that quickness. Isaiah now into double figures with 11 points. Isaiah Williams, by the way, you know, he's playing hurt. He sprained an ankle a couple of weeks ago in Chattanooga in the Dr. Pepper Classic. Uh, he wore an ice pack all the way home on the airplane. He's already had some back problems all season long. He says it might be a situation he'll even need surgery after the season on the back. And he's still putting him up pretty well. Yeah, it's a sign of toughness, definitely, when you're when you're able to play through injury and you're able to play through those, play through those uh, you know those tiny or what seem to be tiny types of injuries. Seattle trails by eight. Broussard. He's got the hot hand, 10 points. Seven of them here in the second half. Driving Broussard, blocked from behind by Ben Aird. They're going to say it went off a Seattle player. Belongs to the Wolverines. Yeah, that was some good help defense because Broussard got the ball at the three-point line. Ben Aird was forced to go out and defend him because Holden got picked off on a pretty good screen. But a good job of help defense there from Keith Thompson and Alfonso Hubbard rotating over. Wolverine's got to get it across to almost a 10 second violation. Almost a turnover. Hubbard controls it though for Utah Valley. Coming up in 13 minutes left here. Second half is really heated up. Isaiah Williams talk about heating up. There's a three. Yeah, just as we've talked about so much, Seattle getting the ball at the high post. That's what the Wolverines did there. Get the ball to Ben at the high post, allow him to either shoot that jump shot or kick it out, and he kicked it out. Isaiah with the long three-point finish. Nice assist from the official. Jumper outside, long two from Burrell. Yeah, this pressure here, I like how the Wolverines are attacking here. They're going to get a shot. Isaiah Williams, 17 points. Yeah, that was a great job. Holton got the ball in perfect position and was able to pass ahead to the wing to Keith and then a nice skip pass over to Isaiah for the finish. Seattle almost giving it up. Isaiah's on the floor, tangled up with Burrell. I think, I think they're going to give a timeout there to Seattle. Seattle called the timeout Burrell on the floor. And there's that pass that we're talking about. Keith sees Isaiah flying down the left wing, able to spot up. But that was a, a nice job of getting the ball into the middle of the court. You know, when the defense of Seattle is pressuring the Wolverines, they get them into trouble. When they can get them on the sidelines and they can get them in the corners, it just puts them in a bad spot. That was a quick pass inside. Holton streaking up the middle. And then at that point, the press was broken because an easy pass ahead and an easy extra pass there from Keith. Isaiah Williams and Keith Thompson, both with 17 points each. Isaiah's got 15 of them from beyond the arc. A lot of folks who look in on UVU TV say that wasn't a three, it was inside the line. There's actually three different lines here at the UCCU Center. One is the old women's line. One is the NBA three-point line, the white stripe, but the real three-point line is where the two tones of wood come together. There's actually a green stripe there. That is the three-point line. There's a three, almost an NBA three. No good and will belong to the Wolverines. Yeah, classic play run there. Trying to get your two big guys to set a screen at or near the free throw line and you get Carter running off of the screen at the top. Wide open shot, uh, didn't make it and the Wolverines off and running. 12 minutes left. Isaiah, he's hot. Now he's not. 
Seattle. Wallace up and in. 10 point lead for the Wolverines, 54 44. Brings us to a media timeout. 11.46 left here at the UCCU Center. Wolverines by 10. Valley University. Your life, your beat, your university. Utah Valley leads it by 10, 54-44. Utah Valley heating up just a little bit. At one time we told you they were at 25% in the second half, 28% rather, now they're up to 46%. Thanks to Isaiah. 17 points tonight. Well, that was quite a stretch of basketball we just saw. We had talked about the run that Seattle went on an 8 0 run and turn around, and here we are. The Wolverines have stretched the game back out to 10 points. A large part of that goes to Isaiah Williams and Keith Thompson. Ben Aird misses inside. Seattle with a rebound. That one pulled down by Clarence Trent. Nice play there, run right out of the timeout, looking to get Ben Air the ball, and he did a great job of ducking in. Just barely rimmed off at the last second. Seattle doing a good job not to lose that one out of bounds. Three-pointer right side, bounces up and through for Eric Wallace. Oh, make that real floor. 35, not 25. Now, what pressure Seattle's putting on here. They got Holden trapped in the corner there. Tried to call a timeout, but Holden did a good job of not forcing a pass. Was able to work, work his way around the defender. Hunsaker, long two. 56-47. Now, Wolverine's falling back here, Jim, into a 2-3 defense. It uh, worked well for them in the first half. Let's see if they can continue it. Inside feed, Trent might have been bumped from behind by Ben Aird. Yep, that's the call. It'll be the third team foul and second personal foul against Big Ben. Yeah, Prince Obasi there able to penetrate the defense from the top, dish it off into the corner to Alan Tate. A good job there of rotation over by Ben, just fouled at the last moment. Bossy feeds inside and a slam dunk from Eric Wallace. See that where he got that Jim that's that short corner that we have been talking so much about a, a great interior pass there into Eric Wallace and a strong finish. KT forces it in and up cannot get it to go. Ball still will belong to Utah Valley. Yeah, getting some physical play inside there Keith attacking the rim hard there almost looked like a Enough contact for a foul to be called, but no call made. Hunsaker will trigger for the Wolverines underneath their own glass. And a foul is going to get called against Seattle's Clarence Trent. They're going to call him for a delay of game, I think, because he stepped over the baseline. Is that a foul? I think it's just a delay of game, what they call. Oh, okay. They just called a delay of game on him because he stepped over the end line. Because the official came all the way over here. Yeah. I think he was just saying, you know, uh, delay of game number 12 made it look like a foul was called. Certainly did. Isaiah buries the jumper. It's a long two, 
Isaiah with 19 now. Under 10 minutes left. Three pointers, good. Where has Jarrell Flora been this whole game? Yeah, this was an issue for the Wolverines in that Wyoming game. When they play that zone, they, they had the tendency to give up three point shots. And here we get a turnover in the middle of the court. Seattle driving in, shot good from Trent. And that's going to put him at the free throw line as Holton Hunsaker picks up the personal. Yeah, there was a turnover right at half court. And you're going to see the nice finish there from Clarence Trent. Holton did a good job of at least getting his body in front, but was unable to stop the, stop the momentum that Clarence Trent had going to the rim and going to the line to finish the three-point play. Gettys Robinson and Keith Thompson take a seat. Taylor Brown into the game. Alfonso Hubbard into the game for the Wolverines. Yeah, and if Holton's going to get pressured like that, I mean, that time they essentially had a double team on him in the paint trying to go the opposite direction. He's got to have some help from other players. You know, Isaiah's in the game. Taylor Brown is in the game. They've got to have some help from other players coming back to ease that ease that pressure. That time, Geddes Robinson came into the to the middle of the court, but he was unable to handle it, and, and the turnover was caused. Wolverines' lead of 17 is now just three. Taylor Brown across the strike. Hands it over to Hubbard, up top to Hunsaker. Brown, Brown will take the three. Flora playing tight defense on Isaiah Williams. Jumper partially blocked. Seattle possession. Inside feed wide open is Aaron Broussard. It's a one point game. And that time Broussard coming up for the steal. Hunsaker, I think, saw him out of the corner of his eye and turned into him yeah, and to just, draw the foul. Yeah, just stop. Smart play there. When you've got a defender right on you and you know that they're not going to be able to stop, just pull up, and the, you're going to get the, the defensive player coming behind and running into you. Second personal foul on Broussard. Yeah, they're off that last possession, the shot there from Isaiah. Seattle able to get that rebound and off and running. The Wolverines not able to get back in their transition defense. and. Aaron Broussard just went right underneath the basket and a nice pass. I believe it was from Prince Obasi in transition. Wolverines led at halftime 40 to 28. Then Seattle comes out on a 12 to 4 run. Keith Thompson, the only Utah Valley player to score during that run when Seattle cut it to two. Then Isaiah Williams got hot for five points. Here's that foul. Yeah, see, Holton knows, he sees the defender, and I, I think he wasn't trying to force the play either. He was just trying to pull the ball out and get into a set. To, but he definitely saw Aaron Broussard coming in from behind, and well, we, we've seen we've seen Holton do that before. It's a nice way of drawing an easy foul. Right now, it's an eight-nothing Seattle run. Ben Ayer working inside. Kicks outside, Taylor Brown for three. Rims off, Seattle with a rebound. They can take the lead with a basket here. Wallace, Seattle's first lead since it was four to three. Yeah, and a nice job there, Prince Obasi probing the defense in transition. They're able to get the ball inside, and a good finish from Eric Wallace. Hubbard stops a ten nothing run. Wolverines back out in front. Shot blocked. Tate crashes to the floor. Foul on UVU. That one's going to go against Taylor Brown. Yeah, Taylor coming over for the rotation, just not able to get there in time. I think that, to me, the biggest concern for the Wolverines defensively going forward has got to be their transition defense because when Seattle get, gets out, their last couple of possessions and couple of buckets have come off of that transition offense. So anytime a shot goes up, and it was even off of the, the make from Alfonso on the nice spin move, but they've got to make sure that they're sprinting back in uh, in transition because Seattle has found some life on, Eight, on transition. 8.15 to play. We're back where we started, all tied up. This time at 60. Alan Tate, by the way, just a 41% free throw shooter. And uh, Seattle took a timeout, right? I think what we've got is the official. I looked down, I looked up. Yeah, official. Had some stoppage here because I think he's looking at Ben Aird or the trainer Andrews looking at Ben Aird because of possible blood. I think that's why they stopped the play here is 
Ben's getting something taped up on his hands. Yeah, NCAA rules say that uh, any player bleeding has to be tended to immediately. 8.15 left. This has turned into a heck of a game for a while there, especially in the first half. It looked like Utah Valley was just going to run away and hide. Seattle has just fought back in the second half. Yeah, I think that's the right word for it is fought back. And now it's going to be key for the Wolverines to do the same. You know, they're going to have to fight back here as they find themselves well, possibly down after the free throws here, but it's going to definitely make for an interesting finish. You know, these types of situations, the fundamentals of the game become so important because when things get tense and emotions are going to be running high towards the end of the game, you've got to just make sure that you focus on the fundamentals. Tate misses the second one. So it remains 60-60. Wolverines break the press. Taylor Brown layup, good. Yeah, a great play there. Nice job all around because Isaiah had the ball initially. He was able to kick it ahead to Holton and a pass diagonal streak to a streaking Taylor Brown for the layup. Six assists for Holton Hunsaker. There's a three coming back the other way. Jarrell Floor averages one point a game. And Floor comes off the bench and has hit three three-pointers. Isaiah with the long three-point miss there. This is important possession defensively for the Wolverines. Broussard with it. Gives over to Obasi. To the corner. Another three. This one's air ball. Wolverines on the run now. Isaiah Williams weaves toward the hole, forces it up, crashes to the floor. Isaiah will shoot two. Yeah, just as you get transition for the uh, Red Hawks of Seattle, Wolverines create their own transition offense. Media timeout, we'll take it with them. 7.14 to play. This one is back and forth right now, Seattle by one. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Think back to when you were a child. What did you dream of becoming as an adult? A pilot? A teacher? A nurse? Maybe a mathematician? A mechanic? Or a scientist? Now imagine a place where everyone is focused on your success. Imagine an education that is personal, engaging, fun, and professional. With an education from UVU, all of this becomes true. Utah Valley University. It's your dream. It's your university. The last play as Isaiah crashes to the floor. He'll shoot a couple free throws. For Seattle, Jarrell Flora has been the story. This is a kid who's only made one three pointer all season. He's made three tonight. All three he's taken. I think he might get a few more playing minutes in the near future. Isaiah Williams, one of the best free throw shooters on this Wolverine team at 80 percent. And Seattle's had 20 points off the bench tonight. Wolverines have had seven. So that's that's been a, a clear spark for Seattle is all the points that they've had coming from their bench players. Third tie of this game. Lead has changed hands five times. Tokyo has been back and forth. It's been fun to watch. This has been a good college basketball game. We remain tied at 63. Coming up on seven minutes left here in Orem. Burrell with it. Yeah, Wolverines got out of the 2-3. The they've, they've switched back here to a man defense. Oh, that time. Eric Wallace had a wide open path to the basket and lost the handle. He was thinking dunk. That's why he lost that. He, he was thinking about the finish before he was able to catch her, before he caught the ball. And a nice job of Alfonso Hubbard backing down the defense for an easy 
turnaround jump shot. Hubbard's got seven points. Wolverines by two. 6.25 left. Side turnaround jumper will not go for Broussard. Seattle basketball. Yeah, that, that time, a nice recovery there from Alfonso Hubbard, but Broussard make, made a nice back cut to the basket. So he's one of those, he, he's the type of player that is very active in cutting, in moving without the basketball, and the Wolverines got, have to be well aware of that. Shot blocked that time by KT, just checked back into the game. Ball on the floor, Wolverines on the run now. Hunsaker takes it all the way, shot blocked out of bounds. Wolverine basketball. Well, once again, a lot of contact there in transition. But we, I, we talked about earlier that yeah. they're letting them play. Yeah, they are, they're definitely letting them play. I, I mean, the, who was it that had the play earlier? I think it was Isaiah. But, you know, give, give Holton a lot of credit there. He, he remained aggressive. He's got to keep doing that. And, and just be aware that when you're going up, they're letting you play, and so go up strong. Ben Aaron. He'll shoot two. Big Ben fouled in the act of shooting by Eric Wallace. Yeah, a nice job of just a very subtle pump fake that you see there. You know, ben did a nice job of pump faking, getting the defender, got Eric Wallace up in the air, was able to go into him for the finish to get to the free throw line. Wallace's first foul. Alan Tate has three. Aaron Broussard has two fouls. Nobody else with more than one for Seattle. Fifth team foul, both teams with five each, by the way. For Utah Valley, they've got four players with two fouls each. Ben Aird, Alfonso Hubbard, Geddes Robinson, and Holton Hunsaker. Very quiet night, by the way, for senior Geddes Robinson. Eight points and two rebounds. Seattle's done a good job on him. It's been the Keith Thompson show until Isaiah took over. Yeah. Ben's second one. Good. It's a four-point lead for the Wolverines. 5.45 left. Holton slaps away the lob intended for Gavin Gilmore. Brown on the left wing. Isaiah, he's got 20 points. Almost lost the handle. Guarded closely by Trent. Hunsaker forces it up. No. Trent skied for the rebound. Good back and forth here. Good defensive plays uh, previously for Holton on the on the defense uh, in the last possession and a nice defensive rebound there from Clarence Trent. Broussard up and in and one. Ben Aird picks up foul number three. Yeah, those offensive rebounds just do so much damage and are so hard. I mean, he went in the first time, wasn't able to convert, and the ball came right back into his lap, and you know, Ben caught in a tough spot there, forced a foul. Aaron Broussard, just three points at halftime. Got 12 points and 10 rebounds right now to show for his work here in the second half. Those are totals. Aren't, those are not second half totals. And we talked about how he was going to be aggressive, and he certainly has. He's certainly come in and been, been very aggressive offensively. Here comes Geddes Robinson back into the game. Taylor Brown takes a seat. Wolverines with their starting five on the floor right now. 4.58 left. Free throw good. One point. Wolverine lead. 67-66. Gettys Robinson bringing the ball up court. Knocked away, turnover. Now, I can't imagine that's what the Wolverines were looking for there. I mean, maybe they thought that, that Gettys was the man that they wanted to bring the ball up, but in the backcourt, they had Gettys and Ben Aird. As it, Holton does a nice job of anticipating the pass there. But on that last possession against that press, Geddes and Ben Aird were the two players in the backcourt. And Geddes, I don't doubt that he can handle the ball. We've seen him do that before, just on that possession. He took it right into the middle of the court. Hunsaker going for the steal here. 
I uh, couldn't quite tell. What happened just in front of us. Monitor blocked me out the last second. Officials say it's Seattle ball, so guess what? It is Seattle ball. 434 left. One point Utah Valley lead over Seattle University. Fifth time these two have played. Seattle's won three of the first four. Long two, no. Off Seattle. Wolverine basketball. And I think the Wolverines have kind of made an attempt to let Ruel make that shot on them. He hasn't attempted a three-point shot this season. And so they're they're playing that, trying to go under those picks that are coming up and being set at the top and going to make him make those long jump shots because clearly he's not looking to take a three-point shot, which would tell you maybe he's not that confident in taking those longer jump shots. Holton have a little trouble on the backcourt. Over to Big Ben. And he throws it away. Now you like the thought there because that's the that's the right play. Those diagonal passes against the press. I think Ben just airmailed that one a little bit over Isaiah as he was coming back to meet the ball in the middle of the court and then just send it over him. But that that's what you have to be looking for. You got to look for those diagonal passes. That's where the that's where the open man is going to be. Ten turnovers now for the Wolverines. Seattle on the drive blocked by Keith Thompson, but a foul is going to get called on Keith Thompson. Now that's the matchup that Seattle wanted. They were able to get Burrell on Ben Aird on a switch. Good help attempt there from Keith, but gets called for the foul at the last second. Keith Thompson's first. It's a one-point game, 340 left. Wow. Ben Aird would have been number four. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills. Patty Garcia, a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. Seattle and Utah Valley. Quite a game here at the UCCU Center tonight. 340 to play, just a one point Wolverine lead. 20 points from Isaiah Williams. 17 from Keith Thompson. For Seattle, 18 points from Eric Wallace, 15 from Aaron Broussard. Those are the four players in this game with double figures. You know, the offense that Seattle's going to run if they can get the Wolverines in a man to man, and the Wolverines may switch between that man to man or a zone defense. What they're going to do is they're going to get the hands, uh, excuse me, the ball into the hands of Burrell at the top of the key, and they're going to come up and set screens to try and get that uh, that switch that they got last time. So let's look for that offensively for Seattle coming down the stretch here is the ball in this man's hands. With some, Seattle with back some, out in front. Yeah, with some screens coming up top to be set. 68-67. Wolverines in the first half had no problems, it seemed, with the press. Second half, giving them some trouble. Thompson on the left wing. Gives over to Isaiah. Now to Holton. Eight seconds on the shot clock. There's a long three. Big shot there from Holton. I think the Wolverines didn't run the offensive set that they were planning there, but 
Holton bails him out with a long three-point shot. Important well, shot there. That was a very critical three. Wolverines back out in front. Stops a little 5 nothing spurt that Seattle was on. Under three minutes left. There's that screen up top that we're talking about. Long two. Good from Burrell. This will come as no surprise. We're tied. Seems like we've been tied a lot in the second half. All sorts of contact in the backcourt. Nothing being called except a timeout. My goodness. Seems like all sorts of players on both sides could have been whistled that time. Yeah, I see Coach Sensaker talking to the officials. <laughs> you know, Hol Holton is a very good ball handler. And when he can get that ball in the middle of the court, you know, it's very rare that he turns it over. But with the defensive pressure that Seattle's putting on them, you know, any spot that you go on the court, seems like there's going to be two defensive players there. So what the last two and a half minutes are going to come down to for me is if the Wolverines can handle this pressure. Because when you get turnovers like in a trap or in a press offense, so you see the last jump shot there from Burrell. It just gives life. It gives energy to your defense, and it, it makes you that much more aggressive. And you know we're tied up. You, you can't be more excited than what we are right now. Two and a half minutes left with a tie ball game. So let's check and see how the Wolverines are are going to handle the press. Because when they do attack, Jim, I think that they're they're going to be fine. Seventy to seventy. Two twenty-eight left here at the UCCU Center. Ben Aird gets things in motion for the Wolverines. Keith Thompson. Now to Hunsaker. It's the last long three. They played some pretty tight defense on Isaiah since he went off a little bit earlier in this half. Yeah, five seconds on the shot clock. Missed that one. Gettys Robinson with an offensive rebound. Out to Hunsaker. He'll jump a three. Bottom. Yeah, I give a lot of credit to Geddes Robinson there, battling hard for that rebound. And a nice kick out from Holton. And just the way he released that, you could tell he knew that was going in. Wolverines by three. A minute 45. Broussard hands it back over to Burrell. Burrell takes it in. Scoop shot up, reverse, draw Seattle to within one. What a finish. I mean, Keith Thompson played that perfectly. He came over, got some shot pressure, but just an amazing up and under the rim there for Cervante Burrell. 73-72, a minute 12 left. Holton missed it. Seattle with the rebound. Now one minute left. You hear Coach Cameron Dahl in front of us uh, urging his team to push that ball up. He's going to get a timeout here. Red Hawks take a timeout with 53.3 seconds left in this game. If you missed Tuesday night's game, the Wolverines were out in front of Wyoming with just a few seconds left. And couldn't put that one away. Yeah, here's this shot from Holton. Look at that release. He knew that was good the second he shot that. That's the NBA three. Yeah, you could tell by the by his reaction as soon as it left his fingertips that he knew that was he knew that was in. You know, we've got the Wolverines going to be playing some defense here. Always critical not to foul. I remember being in the huddle in these types of games and Coach Sunsaker would always talk about position, about help defense. It's going to come down to just straight man to man defense here. Who's going to want it more at the end of the game? And if a shot does go up, every Wolverine has to be crashing that defensive glass because you know Seattle's going to be crashing the offensive boards. Wolverines have only lost two games at home all season. Seattle has won two out of four on the road, though. 73 72, Seattle by one. 53.3. Seconds left in this game. You know, it's so important here the things that you focus on. You've got to have such focus and you've got to have a lot of concentration here if you're the Wolverines defensively because Seattle's you know, going to have the ball here. They're, they're going to be very confident that they're going to finish off this game. 
It's a lot of focus, a lot of concentration from the Wolverines defensively. Seattle possession, 25 seconds on the shot clock, 50 they, on the game clock. Sorry, Jim, they've gone to a zone here, so a couple last possessions, they've played that man-to-man, -man, they've switched up to a zone defense. Burrell over to the right side. Wolverines going for the steal, ball on the floor, held ball, possession arrow, Seattle. Great job there, Ben Air getting on the floor. I think the Wolverines got a break there because he was at his his feet were out of bounds and I think he had his hands on the ball. So great hustle there. Nice job of both players putting their bodies on the floor. Seattle will have nine seconds on the shot clock. It's 35.6 on the game clock. Seattle trails Utah Valley by one. 73-72 the score. And we got nine seconds on the shot clock. Wolverines are going to be aware of that. No fouls here if you're the Wolverines. Just play good straight up defense and no fouls. Don't bail them out at the last minute. Burrell trickles, triggers into Broussard. Back to Burrell. Five seconds. Burrell looking for an opening. Forces it up. Can't get it to go. Ben Ayer grabs the rebound and Burrell reached in. I believe it'll be a foul on Burrell. Three Seattle players had surrounded Big Ben. Clock stop 25.1. Best defensive possession for the Wolverines at the most critical time. That is the sixth team foul, so it will not be a shooting situation for free throws. Instead, it'll be Utah Valley basketball. Yeah, so you're going to have to get the ball in here. That's the number one thing. And then be aware that when you get that ball in, Seattle's probably going to go for a steal immediately. And if not, they're going to look to foul. So try to avoid those corners. And be strong with the basketball when you get it. Don't let them come swiping in and, and take that ball away. I think this is going to go into the hands of Holden Hunsaker. He's going to get he's going to get open here. Shot clock is off. Isaiah Williams got the pass. I don't know if that was intended for Isaiah or Holton. Yeah, it could have gone to either player there because they were both certainly right there in the area. Isaiah is going to take the walk and shoot a couple. But the most important thing is that they got the ball in and they didn't turn it over and ending up at the free throw line. 24 seconds left. Isaiah Williams will be at the line for a one and one with his Wolverine team leading by one. Isaiah tonight, one of two from the free throw line. All-American senior out of Chicago, Illinois. Played at Farragut High School. Free throw. Good. Great, great shot there from Isaiah. You know, you, you look for the Wolverines uh, when they're trying to inbound the ball to either get into the, his hands or Holden's hands because they're both such good free throw shooters. 74 72. Wolverines by two. Second one, also good. Sal's going to look for a quick shot here. I don't think it's necessarily going to be a three, but they're going get to get a quick bucket. 18 seconds. There's a long jumper from the corner. No good. Rebound Hubbard of UVU, and he crashes to the floor after being fouled by Seattle. 14 seconds left. Now we'll walk back down the other way, and Hubbard will get to shoot a one and one. I've been watching Isaiah here because I think he's he's looking like he has that feeling that they caught a break there because you see the late rotation there leaving Jarrell Flora wide open in the three, and we talked about how well he shot the ball tonight. Isaiah, I think he was coming into the paint to help a little bit and recovered at the last minute. So you could see on his face that uh, he was grateful for that miss. Three-point lead for the Wolverines. 14 seconds to play. Free throw, no. Seattle, rebound. Come down quickly. Burrell has it. Pull up, jumper, no. Rebound, Wolverines on the floor. Another foul on Seattle. Clock stops, six and a half seconds left. You know, in that last possession, too, we've got to give credit for Alfonso Hubbard class crashing the glass, and he does it on back-to-back -back possessions here. I believe he's going to be the one at the free throw line. But a nice job of the Wolverines getting back in transition off of the miss and not allowing any not allowing any direct path and easy layup to the basket, forcing Burrell to shoot the pull-up jumper. Foul on Rasmussen, by the way, his second. Free throw, Hubbard, good. Three points 
three straight points rather from the free throw line for the Wolverines and they lead by four now with six and a half seconds left. Second one, good. No fouls here for the Wolverines, play straight defense and just like they've done the last several possessions. Shot from the corner for three, no. Rebound Wolverines and that is how this one will finish. Wolverines win it 77-72. Wolverines improved to eight and 10, Seattle falls to three and 10. We'll take a break back to talk to coach Dick Hunsaker and wrap this one up. Utah Valley by five. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. section and cheer for the mighty wolverines mighty athletic wolverine lead sports passes are now available your mall pass gets you tickets to every ncaa home game free food at the tailgate parties prizes at the games and lots of new friends get more information on their facebook page or by calling campus connection at 801-863-8797 go uvu Wolverines win their eighth game of the season with a 77-72 victory over Seattle, a game that saw eight lead changes. We're joined courtside now by victorious head coach Dick Hunsaker. Coach, congratulations on the victory. Uh, this one is uh, one of those that have just caused gray hairs, will it not? Um, yeah, Seattle, as athletic as team as we're going to play all year, as athletic as team as, uh, you know, in the, in the same game with Arkansas maybe more athletic because they're athletic up front. I know how we got the lead in that ball game. We got the lead in the game. We made shots in transition and, you know, there were some shots that, you know, that's us. And we're going to take them. <laughs> and fortunately, we, we hit them and we got a stretch. We took them in the second half and we didn't get as many down and then we didn't defend as well. We made some, some really poor choices defensively and I've just got to grow on that because we do make the game harder than it does. But I thought Holton was sensational down the stretch, hit some big buckets as he's done throughout his life. Uh, fought through some, is fighting through uh, certainly uh, some struggles with shooting the ball. But I thought he had a terrific four game. They, tried, they went with the press, they subbed. He went with the press, very unusual on the road in Orem, Utah, to have a team come in from sea level and pressure for the entire ball game. But I was very pleased to only have 11 turnovers for that game. I thought Air did an outstanding job, very underrated job against that press for a big man to handle that ball and have to make passes and decisions. Very pleased with that, and uh, I'm just real happy for my kids because they're coming off as tough a loss as I've ever experienced as a coach, and uh, I never had a game like that. So I'm just real pleased and happy for them. Hopefully this is something we're gonna build on. We got Thompson Hubbard. Thompson Hubbard play, we're a different ball club. So thank you very much. You bet, thank you coach, appreciate the time. Coach Dick Hunsaker dropping by to uh, give us his opinion on how these things went. You're checking out highlights of this game as uh, Matt Peterson will join us momentarily to wrap this one up. Wolverines win at 77-72. They shoot 47% from the floor. Seattle shot 42%. 22 points, Isaiah Williams. 17 points, Keith Thompson. 11 for Holton Hunsaker to go along with six assists. Eight points, Ben Aird with 12 rebounds. Geddes Robinson, 
eight points, three rebounds. All right, partner, uh, your final analysis, and we'll get out of here. Well, I think it was a, a game of two halves. The Wolverines storm out to that lead in the first half and do a very good job of you know, getting that lead. And then the second half, towards the end of the first half and more in the second half, uh, Seattle fought their way back in. But I think it was defense to me. The, the way that Wolverines were able to switch up their defenses from the zone to the man, you know, confused Seattle and, you know, forcing him to shoot 42% for the for the uh, for the game, excuse me, and uh, you know had some big play from Isaiah and big shots from Holton and Key Thompson, probably the player of the game. And of course, the Wolverines get to play him again next Friday. Thanks for being with us, folks. This one was fun. Utah Valley wins it by five. Tonight's game has been produced by students from the digital media department here at UVU. This has been a copyright production of UVU and the UVU Sports Network. Five point win for the Wolverines for Matt Peterson. I'm Jim McCullough saying good night for more of Utah.